Hello, welcome to the channel. I am Angela, this is Clark Fine Art, and today we are looking at the November 2021 Art Snacks Plus Box. We're gonna take a look at what's inside, and then we're gonna create something with the supplies. So let's get started. Okay, so November 2021. Oh, first thing I'm noticing is the surface is right on top, which if you've seen my video where I unboxed a bunch of the Art Snack Plus boxes, I'll put a link to that here if you missed it. When the surfaces are in the bottom, they can get stuck in there. And I have to say that this makes it really easy to lift that out. So was that by accident? Was that on purpose? Have they changed that? I don't know, but I love that it's on top. So first thing right out the gate, we have the Windsor Newton watercolor. This is cold pressed, 300 GSM, 140 pound, and it is 25% cotton. So this is a blend paper, cellulose and cotton. I'm looking forward to seeing how this performs. So there's our surface. Now I'm gonna take this, our package of supplies out of the box. And I will again let you know, if you just went with the basic art snack box, what items would be found in that box? So the surface is an art snacks plus feature. If you get the Art Snacks Plus box, you get a full size surface. But let's take a look and see what was inside. Okay, we have a postcard that lets me share Art Snacks with a friend. And then there we get a discount. I will try to see, I will link in the description below so that you can get to Art Snacks. Okay, so for the basic Art Snacks box, if you only got the regular box, ooh, oh, oh, I just peeked. I just looked ahead and I am super excited at what one of these supplies is. Let's see. So in the basic box, you would have received this. I've been wanting to use, oh, I've been wanting to order one of these and I've just been kind of putting it off because I have other um, brush pens, you know, push the water brushes. So ooh, I'm very happy that this is in here. So this is a Derwent push button water brush pen. It has a three millimeter medium tip. Ooh, that so far, I like the way that feels versus some of my others. I'm looking forward to giving this a go. So this says it's an $11.49 retail value. Paint anywhere, anytime with the Derwent Push Button Water Brush. Comfortable and convenient. This brush features a handy button that provides easy control of water flow. Its round medium tip is great for building textures and layers. The durable nylon bristles hold their shape well, maintaining performance over time. So there's your little... Derwent water brush information. Next, oh, there's our little sticker for the month. Next, you would have received two Faber Castell gelatos. These are a $2.95 retail value. You're in for a real treat with Faber Castell gelatos. These compact, vibrant pigment sticks are creamy, smooth, and light fast. They have great coverage, easily gliding onto paper, canvas, canvas, or wood. Blend the colors with or without water and watch them melt into your artwork. Interesting. So I have a, looks like a, a red shade and it almost looks like silver. Metallic icing. And this one says right we all know and that writing gets tiny i can't read it grabbing the old glasses 
So we have metallic icing and watermelon. Those were the names of the two colors I got. Watermelon and metallic icing. So some sparkles. That's exciting. Looking forward to seeing how that works. Might as well keep these on. And then also in the regular Art Snacks box, you would have received this, Dr. P.H. Martin's. Uh, this is Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. So liquid watercolor. Now I will say I have used liquid watercolor in the past. If you saw my Witch Art subscription box is best for you. I'll link that here if you've missed it. In that, in that video, I covered the Let's Make Art watercolor boxes. And they use liquid watercolors. That's what you get is a liquid watercolor from them. And that's by their own in-house company, Dandelion Paint Company. And, um, but I love the way they work. So very excited to give the Dr. P.H. Martins a try. And I have ice yellow. So those are some interesting combinations and colors so far. Now, let me just say, if you got the regular art snack box, that's what I would have received right there. Now that box is much cheaper than the Art Snack Plus box, but this is what I would have received. What kind of project am I making with yellow ice, um, metallic icing, which is, you know, like a white sparkly color and watermelon? I don't know. That would have been a fun adventure, huh? But, but I got the Art Snacks Plus box. So in the Plus box, again, you always get a full size surface. We got the Winsor & Newton. And in addition, I got an additional supply with this plus box and, oh, there's my snack, of course, which again, a cherry airhead. I keep getting cherry when they put airheads in there. Our snacks, cherry's not my favorite flavor. Um, anyhow, then the bonus art supply that I got, and if you guys just watched my video on my upcrate boxes. Again, I will link that here if you haven't seen it. I got some Neo Color 2s, which I just, I've been wanting these colors. I have, these have been in my cart, like just waiting for me to pull the trigger and, and actually check out and buy, of course, a much larger set than this. Because, you know, full set syndrome and all the things, yes. But these are 10 Neo Color 2 Aquarelle artist pastels this is a set of 10 the retail is 23 dollars and 85 cents softer than colored pencils denser than wax crayons and water soluble karen dosh neo neo color 2 aquarelle artist pastels are truly unique featuring a high pigment load and excellent light fastness they can be used for a variety of techniques combine wet and dry applications in the same piece layer light colors over dark anything goes these also work well alongside your new gelatos, so have fun experimenting. Oh, I will. I am, I am, this is most, most exciting. So in addition, the Windsor Newton watercolor pad, it is a nine by 12, $14.99 retail value. It says this is a new product. Windsor Newton's finest watercolor paper is the perfect choice for artists wanting to experiment, sharpen their skills, or work with large quantities of paper. Crafted in Italy, this cold pressed paper reflects light well, resulting in the brightest watercolor paintings. You'll find 12 sheets of 300 GSM paper in your new pad, each made from a mixture of cotton and cellulose. Don't be shy with the water. This durable surface was designed to withstand saturation. So there you go. That's what came in the November 2021 Art Snacks and Art Snacks Plus boxes. I can't wait to try these. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to pause recording. I'm going to open this stuff up. I'm going to put some water in my brush and give a thought about what we want to design. And now in this video, unlike the others in the past, we're actually going to jump in and create some artwork with these products. We'll swatch them. We'll see what they can do. And we're going to create the artwork. And if you like that new format or the, you know, the idea of this new format, please smash that like button. Let me know. Give a thumbs up. It definitely helps. It lets YouTube know that this is something that you want to see. And it also lets me know that you are happy to see this new format instead of just unboxing and done. 
um, because otherwise we would have been done here the way I was doing it. But I really want to just dive in and use these supplies. So not only do you see what came in the box, but you can see them in action and see if maybe that's something that you would enjoy. So I'm going to hit pause, but for you, it'll only be a second and I will see you in a moment. Okay. So I've opened my supplies. I grabbed a couple extra things. One, this is just a little ceramic dish so that I can actually put the Dr. PH Martin's liquid watercolor on here so that I can access this like my little palette. Um, I opened up the gelatos and again, if I need to mix or, or deal with anything, we'll do it right on this little tiny palette. These are unwrapped. I will open those. Now you'll see here I have strips of paper. This, these strips of paper are from this paper and what I did, I just wanted to share with you guys real quick, like inside the cover, it gives you information. And at the top, it tells you that Windsor and Newton's watercolor paper is crafted by expert paper makers in Italy with a mixture of cotton and cellulose. This paper reflects light while retaining the transparency of watercolors and its medium grain makes it suitable for all styles of watercolor painting. Now that's kind of what I've already read you in the art snacks description, but it goes on to say it's free from acids, chlorine and optical brighteners, offering a bright natural whiteness of archival quality that does not yellow degrade or alter over time. The fibers are internally and externally sized and treated to guarantee optimal absorbance and resistance to warping even when saturated with water or multiple layers of paint. We will test that today. So a perfect introduction for students, beginners, and leisure artists wanting to hone their skills and experiment on a surface of exceptional quality and value. It's ideal for watercolor, gouache, pen, and ink. So have you tried this paper? Drop me a comment and let me know. Have you tried it? It says it's new, um, so I'm not sure just how new. Tell me what you think. Um, what I did was I removed one piece of paper and then I took that paper and I actually cut it down, which gave me these two extra strips. I'm gonna use these for swatching and part of the prompt and I'll get into that in a moment. But what I did was when I cut this down, and you'll see I have some washi tape on here and I will explain that. Also, let me just kind of shift these out of the way for us for a moment. Okay, so when I cut this down, I took my Strathmore, and I've shared these with you guys before, my Strathmore watercolor cards, and you'll see it has, you know, it's got a crease where I can fold that and turn it into my card. I wanted to take something that was the same size because I need to make a card for somebody, and I thought, well, you know what? I could just do this, use one of the envelopes that came with my Strathmore card, cards and then actually be able to send this in the mail. So I thought in today's project, well, I would make a card. So that's why it's cut the same size. And then if you notice, I took the green washi tape and I lined that up with where the fold was. So that gave me the front surface because I did not fold this paper first. So that will give me where my fold should be. And then this is my front surface of my card. I then wanted to make sure I had a border taped off of my front surface. So I took the washi tape that was the size I wanted my border to be and it went right around the edges. Of course, that only goes to the edges of my paper and you know this does not tape it to my actual board. So then I took wider washi tape, went over that. Yes, I know this is a lot of washi tape, but I will note that when I use washi tape, I'll actually reuse my washi tape a couple times. This washi tape was from, you see here, it's kind of bent, it was from another project. So I'll just kind of take it off and stick it off in an area of my desk where, you know, it won't necessarily get ruined, but I can come back. And so once I have my border taped off, then I will take the, the other washi tape and actually use that to then tape it down to my board. So now my paper can't move. Hopefully it won't buckle. We will see, we will see if it, um, if what they say is true. And I'm actually gonna put another piece here because I see just a little minuscule space there that I know if I should get water over this, I'm gonna leave a mark 
not seeing what I did with the fourth piece of that tape. I probably already used it elsewhere. I'm actually just going to take a piece and I'm using my little, pretty sure you guys have seen it before. I grabbed a little sign and I need to check the Dollar Tree to see if they have more because I need more of these. And usually like Thanksgiving time, you'll see them come out and it's like, you know, blessed or whatever. They have these little sayings and they're just these little like chipboard signs that you would just set somewhere and the back's hollow, which is perfect because they fit your washi tapes absolutely great. And then you see how I've done that here. I just kind of, when I use the tape, stick it right there and it's easy for me to get to for the next time I need to use it. So that's my little tip. That's how I use my washi tapes bonus. Okay. So this is taped down. I'm going to be using this to test out our projects. I'm going to set it aside first because before we test our, our products, I do want to be able to swatch them, kind of show you what they do. So I'm going to take one of these strips and put one away because I was looking at the cards. Now this is what you would get the menu that you would get with your regular Art Snacks box. This is the one that comes with the Art Snack, well, with the Art Snacks Plus, you get both of them. So now I noticed, I was like, well, wait a minute. Did November 21 have a prompt? Um, you know, before I just go creating my card and doing what I wanna do. Like, did they have a prompt? So on the regular, if you just got the Art Snack box, there is no prompt. It just says, take the Art Snacks Challenge Use all of the products in your box to create an original piece of art. Snap a picture of your artwork and share it on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram with the hashtag, hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. For my artwork that I wanted to create, there's no prompt there. So that's what I am going to do when I do my card. I have an idea of what I want to do and we will use our products and create the card. But on my Art Snacks Plus box, that menu, it actually did say bonus art prompt. And it says, we love making to-do lists and better yet, illustrating them. Have you ever illustrated yours? Try making a doodle for each item on your to-do list. Are you guys list makers? Because I am. So this was not hard for me to, you know, come up with an idea of what to do. I already make lists. I need them to keep me organized. I need them to keep me focused. They are my best friends. So yes, I have lists everywhere. There are post-it notes for when I'm live with you guys. There are, do you do that? Drop me a comment and let me know. I'm like the post-it queen here. They're, they're everywhere. Okay, so to start with, I just, oh, and I filled my Derwent brush with distilled water. Let me just make note of that distilled water. Why did I choose distilled water? Because I have found in the past with my very first water brush, I was like, oh, just fill it with water. Okay. Any water, right? I just need water. Well, I left, I went and I got tap water and then I left, <clears throat> I left that water in the brush. I didn't empty it when I was done. I was like, well, it's meant to hold water. Why do I need to empty it? I set it like this. So the brush was up. I figured it couldn't leak and I could just leave that in there indefinitely. Right? Wrong. Wrong in the sense that I left regular tap water in there. And then I came back and noticed that floating in my water, because I had used some of it, but there was still, you know, there was still some, there was like airspace in there because I had used part of the water. And then when I came back, I noticed there was stuff floating in there and it almost looked like I had mold floating in my water. Yeah, that's not good. So I promptly cleaned that out, sterilized it. And now I use distilled water because I have found that if I use distilled water and I leave it in my water brushes, it doesn't mold and you know, distilled water is better for our artwork anyways, because there's no chemicals from it being treated to be safe for us to drink. It's, it's distilled. So just a little tip. I don't know if you guys do or do not do that. I am going to swatch these colors. I will start with Dr. PH Martins and I will do the gelatos and we will do the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s. And if you're wondering, there's Neo Color 1 and Neo Color 2. If you're not familiar, Neo Color 1, those are those are the 
um, they're white. They're not water soluble. And then the Neo Color 2s are the Aquarelle, and those, of course, are water soluble. We are going to get these going. I will put some drops here, and we're going to start swatching. Then we'll create our artwork. And yeah, I'm hoping that you are liking this format better. For swatching, I grabbed one of my Pigma Micron pens. And I grabbed this one because I know that once it dries, it doesn't bleed into my watercolors. So I thought this would be a good one to use to show the opacity um, when we get into the Neo colors and the gelatos. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a black line down a section of this paper. All right, so I can use that for my Neo colors. And we'll also do a section up here for when I swatch the gelatos that way. For starters, and actually I'll, I want to be able to write what they are. So first one I'm going to do is the Dr. P.H. Martin. And this one is ice yellow. If you have not used liquid water, watercolor before, this is, um, you know, it's just your pigment. It's in liquid form. You can make it lighter by adding water, diluting it. Or full strength, it should be the color that you see in the bottle. This says, okay, again, with the glasses, I thought I was done reading. So technical pen, brush, or airbrush. So the consistency of this would be safe to put in an airbrush. So that's very interesting to know. Or you could add this to a technical pen and then be writing with watercolor. So have you done it that way? Have you used these in an airbrush or in your pens? And then of course it says you can use it with a brush, which is how we're going to use it today. So, I mean, I guess if I think about that technical pen, I bet if I had like a bunch of different brushes, I could, instead of filling them with water, could fill them with color. And then I would just have watercolor brush pens. Um, you know, interesting. Okay. This lid does not want to, I'm seeing this. Yeah. See the stopper. And it's not what was supposed to happen. I am sure that stopper should have stayed. It's really stuck to the bottle. So I am getting that unstuck. Wow. I was really stuck there. There. So now I have a dropper. It's working. It's attached. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to put a couple drops on my palette. Take my brush. I'm just going to dip that in some water. And I'm going to grab, without squeezing, I'm not squeezing this because my, while my brush is wet now, I don't want it soaked. So you see a little bit of water coming off of my finger, but it's not soaking wet. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this color. Very vibrant. Wow. That is a very very vibrant yellow. And I didn't put the mark here because I know it's going to be transparent. Just looking at the bottle, you know that this is not an opaque color. Watercolor is transparent. It's not gouache. So I'll put that down. And now I will. Whoop. Okay. So that I barely squeezed and that water drop just come rolling down. You barely have to touch that button. Have you used these Derwent brushes before? I barely put any pressure on that button. And water, just lots of water. Okay. And I know that's so hard to see with these lights. I am still working on this. I told you last week during my live, um, I have a few ideas. And while yesterday I had an appointment that took me, there we go. Yesterday I had an appointment that took me out of the studio. So I was not able to work on my lighting situation yesterday, but hopefully I can work on it some tomorrow. It's not on my to-do list today, speaking of to-do list. 
And so now you see, I'm just to clean my brush, um, just squeeze some of that water out and have gone over it. Now that did stain, it did stain the bristles, which I expected could happen. And actually I'm just kind of using, I'm brushing it on my paint puck to see if it will come clean completely back to white and no. So it did stain, you know, it did stain my brush slightly with the yellow. That can happen. So there's my Dr. PH Martin's. I'm going to let that, I'm going to leave this here because I'll use that if I need the yellow when I create my artwork. But now I want to check out, these are the Fabric Castell Gelatos. And I'm going to have watermelon and metallic icing. I've never used these before. So guys, if you see me using them in a way that maybe isn't as intended, I thought I opened them all the way, but no, I didn't. I left some of that plastic on there. If you see me using them in a way that maybe isn't necessarily how they were intended, you know, let me know. I'm just experimenting. I've never used them before. Um, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to lay down a little bit of this color then I'm going to take my water brush. I'm going to activate it and move it around and see what it does. Okay. So I'm going to take that color, put it down on the paper and I'm going over where my black line is. Um, so you see the texture, you can really pick up the texture of the paper there because I'm just lightly, I'm not pressing hard. I'm just lightly putting down some of that pigment and that definitely as they just kind of gently go over the surface of that paper, it definitely shows you that, you know, the texture of the paper. So you see that that is, and now I'm just going to take my brush and uh, add some water. I really think with these, this Derwent brush, I don't know. My other brushes don't get big beads of water rolling down them. So I just squeezed that, had a big bead and I just kind of tapped it off on my, so that it's wet, but not soaked if that makes sense and now just kind of going over these with the water to see how it's going to dissolve into the paper i'm not i don't have my finger on the on the button to push because i don't want more water feeding out not yet anyways i want this to kind of be making my full strength you know color if you would now I can see through that. So opaque, I would say no, that black line comes right through. Um, next, I want to just, I'm just going to kind of rinse. I'm not going to press the button because I know it, it was giving me a whole bunch of water. Actually, I'll let the drop come. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of water. Now I will say that is a lot of water, but when I put all that water up here, um, that paper is not, it is not really warping and buckling on me. I mean, now mind you, this is by no means a large wash of color. So, and I can see here as I move that color, I can still see where it an, an initially touched the tooth of the paper. Not sure if I can get that up closer for you guys to see or not. I can really see where that initially touched the paper. The lines are still where it, like, where it grabbed on the tooth. So will I get nice smooth blending after adding water? Mm, I don't, I don't know. The other thing that I would say, have you used these like as if they were a watercolor pen? Like, can I? Take my wet brush. Now I will not write with this again while this tip is wet. I would let that dry. So no, that's not really picking up a whole lot of color. That's not picking up a lot of color. The next thing I would question is, can I mark this color on my palette? And perhaps where this is, this palette is so smooth. I have an idea. 
Now I'm just going to add a drop of water to this. See if I can't dissolve that and mix up that color. It's not the, the bit of that that was touching the, um, see how gritty it is. So it's not dissolving really fast into that water to be able to work it on my palette where I could then just grab that color, come over here and paint with it. But, but let me try one more thing. I have the Karen Dosh palette and this is made, it's textured. So it is made for exactly this type of thing where you would come in color. So now it has tooth like your paper would grabs that color. Then can I come in, add my drop of water. Okay. So that, cause there was a lot more that grabbed a lot more pigment. And I would say that, yes, that's a lot darker than that. Very interesting. That is, that is definitely, again, like I have not tried the gelato. So I want to know, like, how can I, if I just take this, put down a bunch. Okay. So tried to use a bunch of pigment on that palette. And this did not come in the, in the subscription box. So I would definitely say that I'm not going to use it this way in any artwork because the goal was using only what I got in my art box. So you see, I used, that was a lot more pigment and now it's even darker. It is dissolving. I, I'm getting some grainy like that, but not much. It's mostly dissolving. So textured palette, maybe. Yeah. See, that's, that's letting me get darker, darker pigment to paint with. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. So I could see how, good, how do I see myself using this? I could see myself using this as laying in some color directly on my paper, which is what I'll do here. Because again, this palette did not come with the set the or the this month's box so i won't be using that um i've wanted to get have any of you tried you know the cutting boards they're like thicker plastic than this is um but they have that texture i wonder if one of if those would work as this kind of palette where you didn't have to spend a fortune i am going to go to the dollar tree i was there today but i totally forgot about this and i'm going to grab one and test that out for you in a future video and let you know like can you use that to make your own palette for watercolor pencils or gelatos or like the neo color the water the water based crayons and i'm just going to dab this off because i don't want to be tempted to use it this didn't come in the box i was just experimenting to show you guys but i will link this in the description if you're interested in looking into that palette some more i will link that below okay I'm going to let that dry and we will see just how that looks. Let's move on. I can see the shimmer that's in it. That's for sure. I can see the little speckles there. So metallic icing, let's put this down. So just going straight on the paper, not what I would call opaque. And again, my apologies, because this is not the best for seeing metallic icing. You see the shimmer? You can see some of the shimmer coming up in there. and But not completely opaque. I, I can still see my line through it. But let's activate that. And see. Does the shimmer get more intense? Or does it get less? My color's looking darker as I added that water. But again, it's wet. So when it dries, I'm not sure. And then I'm just going to add water and pull that color out. All right, we'll let that dry and see what, how it does. So moving right along, cleaning my brush in my little well again. 
I do not need to do it this way. I can just squeeze this so the water feeds down through, clean that off, wipe it on a paper towel or sponge or whatever. And that's how, that's how you could clean your brush. You don't need something like this to clean it with. So these are very good for like, you know, while you're, if you're on the go. I was seeing this sort of sheen to the paper along this edge. And I thought, well, is it everywhere or is it just on the edge? Um, and I noticed that where I added water, I couldn't see a sheen at all, which is why I came back in, added water right here, then dried that. And yes, in fact, like the sheen comes down, stops and then continues. And I don't know, I'm going to try to get a good picture of that so that you can actually, if I can get my camera to see what my eye is seeing, I will get a picture of that and share that for you. I'll pop that in here so you can see it. If you look, the top arrow is pointing along down along the edge where I could see that sort of shimmer to the paper. But then if you see on the right there where I put pointed the arrow in, that's where I then added water, just a little bit of water, then dried it, and that's gone. So I'm guessing maybe that shimmer is coming from the sizing on the paper. That would be my guess if I had to make one. So let's move right along. If we look at our swatches here, so again, we can really see that that white got gray when I colored over where the Pigma Micron liner, and maybe it needs to dry more. Maybe if I was gonna try this again, I would do the line work, wait a day perhaps, and then come back and see, does the white do that or does it get opaque? But where I put it at the bottom, you can see it definitely lightened that line and it doesn't look right. And over here where it was just the white on the card, it is definitely, and even if I turn it that way, you can see that that white is brighter than the actual paper. It's it's a, just a little bit brighter than the paper itself, which the paper, I must say, in comparison to like the Strathmore watercolor, uh, the Strathmore watercolor paper, it's a brighter white than that. So if you're familiar with the Strathmore, it is definitely, so these are the watercolor cards. If I look at this paper, and I don't know if it's going to show up well for you to tell, but there's definitely a difference in value there. You see, so this has more of a, almost a cream kind of off white compared to when I set it next to this. I used to think this was a nice bright white, but no, not once I see this. This is a very, definitely a nice bright um, white, almost a cool white, if you would. I like it. If you're looking for a nice bright white paper, that could be an answer for you. Um, the metallic, now that it's dried there, Ooh, you see the shimmer? There we go. You see the shimmer on that, that metallic icing that has a great shimmer to it as I kind of move that around for you. So interesting colors. Um, oh, and this yellow, this Dr. PH Martin's, um, ice yellow guys, that is like neon yellow. Look at that. That is like a neon yellow. That is an awesome yellow. So then we have our yellow, cad orange, scarlet, purple, violet, cobalt blue, emerald green, brown, and black. And I will say that had I been patient and let these dry on their own and not actually dried it, if you look at scarlet, orange, and yellow, which did have a chance to dry on their own, you see how much darker it is here. That pigment kind of settled. Everything kind of naturally dried out. But here where I used the um, heat, I got more even disbursement throughout. So definitely, definitely uh, it is worth letting your watercolors dry naturally on their own. But in the interest of time, because I already have a feeling this video is going to be late coming to you today. Um, yeah, we're going to move right along and I use the dryer. My apologies, this video may be later than my normal time. I am going for consistency and getting my videos out at three o'clock. When I go live, it's at three o'clock Eastern time. I like my videos on Tuesday to go 
um, at three o'clock to publish at three o'clock, just, just for that consistency. So you know what time you can expect to see something new from me. Um, but again, my apologies if the video is late getting to you today. It has been a crazy couple of days. I'll talk to you about it in the live on Thursday. Hopefully you will join me for that. For the Art Snacks Plus. The prompt was to do a to-do list, right? And illustrate it. That's what I'm going to do here. First, I'm going to do the prompt. And in seeing how these went down on the the other side of the paper, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but hey, we'll try. So we're going to start off with to do, to do today.
I like the Neo colors. I definitely like the Neo colors. I will, I, I will say that. And then my, my orange was broken too. There's a little piece of orange in there. But again, I would just put that in a palette, activate it and paint with it. After seeing the way that, that these activated with the water brush, I mean, I would even consider taking little pieces, popping them in a palette and just using them as like, like a watercolor cake. I could absolutely see you being able to do that. I like these. I like these a lot. So that was following my prompt, but now let's actually have some fun. I want to create a piece of artwork with this. Um, I will share that with the, with the prompt or with a hashtag for the prompt. So I'll, you'll see that on social media. I'll grab a picture of it and setting that aside so that it can dry. All right. I am just going to see how these will react. I want to put multiple colors down. I want to layer them. I want to see how this blends and yeah, let's play with this.
it and just put my signature on the back and then there's my little card car and again you could letter if you were if you're into hand lettering um you could definitely just put let it snow right across the top and then open it up and have you know your own little message in here i am going to be um creating a video soon there's a supply that i just got that i can't wait to share with you and we're going to do some other christmas card making stuff so if that um is something you are interested in hit that like button and you know click subscribe turn on the bell notification and you will be notified when my future videos go up but we are going to be doing some christmas projects soon i can't wait to share that with you so there you go guys there's the november 2021 art snacks and art snacks plus what do you think i had fun i really enjoyed um playing with the supplies my least favorite was probably the gelatos, but then I can't say that I don't like them. They need to be given more playtime to see just how, how to use them because I've never used them before. So it was fun though. I did, I did enjoy experimenting with them. I wish that I could have gotten a little more metallic look to some of my snowflakes. Um, but you know, that's, it's fine. This, I made this card using this watercolor paper. And of course, here was my to-do list based on the prompt from the Art Snacks Plus box. Our Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 Aquarelle. I love them. Love them. I cannot wait to do more with them. If looking at these in another video going more in depth, maybe comparing these versus the Lyra watercolors, that I got in my upcrate box. Maybe we'll do that. If you're interested, hit that thumbs up, drop me a comment, let me know. Does this re-encourage you that maybe Art Snacks is the box for you? I don't know. I said, wow me in November, wow me in December, or I might cancel come January. And wow, I love November. That is all I can say. I love November. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Have you checked out some of my other videos? If not, you can click this link right here and go have a look. I will see you live at 3 p.m. on Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time right here. And until next time, guys, keep creating. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.